Elsa Schiaparelli, Chanel's arch enemy and the designer who flirted with surrealism and brought shock factor into fashion. Designing clothes, let it be said in passing, is not a profession but an art. It is one of the most difficult and disappointing arts because as soon as the dress is born, it already belongs to the past. A dress does not remain attached to the wall like a painting, nor does it lead the long intact and preserved existence of a book. These words, pronounced by Elsa Schiaparelli, perfectly encapsulate her unique perspective on fashion and the world. As a young girl, she saw the eccentric aristocrat, the Marquesa Cassati, leading a leopard on a diamond-studded leash. The boldness and style of it never left Schiaparelli. In reality, Elsa Schiaparelli dedicated her entire life to capturing the enchantment of Marquesa Cassati not only in her fashion designs, but also in her personal journey. Her life, marked by numerous highs and lows. As a young woman, more instinctive than intellectual, she drifted on the edges of creativity. Let's take a journey into the life of Elsa Schiaparelli, a visionary artist in the realm of fashion. Before we continue the video, welcome to the Fashion Fable. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our videos Elsa Schiaparelli was born on September 10, 1890, in Rome, Italy. She came from a family of Piedmontese intellectuals. Her family background instilled in her a love for knowledge, beauty, and elegance. Even as a young girl, Elsa displayed a creative spirit. At the age of six, she sought to express herself through fashion, despite her mother's constant reminders of her perceived ugliness. When she was six years old, in order to answer to her mother who constantly told her how ugly she was. Beauty. I remember my mother used to say to my sister that she was beautiful and I was ugly. Elsa decided to cover her face with flowers, or at least that was her intention. She managed to get the gardener to give her some seeds and she put them in her mouth, in her ears, in her throat, because she thought they would grow with the heat. Obviously, this was not the case, though her attempt was misguided. It showed the seed of artistic ambition within her. Elsa's pursuit of beauty extended beyond fashion. She studied philosophy and dreamed of becoming a poet. She even published a collection of poems. However, her family discouraged her aspirations and she was sent to a Swiss convent. It was during a conference of the Theosophical Society in London that Elsa's passion for philosophy introduced her to Wilhold de Wint, a count with a shared interest. She fell in love and got engaged to him within 24 hours. The newlyweds relocated to New York after Germany had been declared to be at war, where Elsa made connections with artists including Duchamp and Man Ray. But Elsa's life took another turn when she married the count, known as Gogo, in 1920. Schiamparelli's husband left her with a young daughter and a severely depleted capital. She actually came close to going without during her final weeks in New York. She was saved by a friend who paid for both of them to take a flight to France. Although things were difficult, she felt at home at last. After returning to Europe and settling in Paris, Elsa's path crossed with that of stylist Paul Poiret. This encounter would change her life forever. One day, I accompanied a rich American friend to Paul Poor Ray's small and colorful tailor shop. It was the first time I had ever entered a Maison de Couture. I wore a loose-fitting, soft-cut coat that could have been designed today. Why don't you take it, mademoiselle? It looks like it was made especially for you. I can't afford it, I said. It is certainly too expensive, and besides, when could I wear it? Don't worry about money, replied Paul. You can wear anything, any situation. This encounter marked the beginning of Elsa's journey into the world of fashion. Elsa's early works as a designer faced initial setbacks, as established companies with whom she worked did not want to deal with a beginner. Nevertheless, she made the decision not to give up, and she opened her own studio in 1927 in Paris. There, Elsa's creativity flourished, giving birth to incredible and daring creations. Her first sweater, a black piece with a trompe l'oeil bow, showcased her nonconformist style. The sweater with a bow became an instant sensation, capturing the attention of the fashion world and setting the tone for Elsa's future groundbreaking designs. Elsa Schiaparelli's artistic vision extended beyond the boundaries of traditional fashion. 
In 1930s Paris, Elsa Schiaparelli became a vibrant and colorful presence on the fashion scene. She was the first to infuse high fashion with amusement by highlighting its humorous side. While her approach garnered notoriety and disdain from the fashion establishment, she gained ardent support from artists and intellectuals. Personalities like Jean Cocteau attended her fashion shows, and Salvador Dali even created special items for her. She began collaborating with these avant-garde artists to create truly unique and thought-provoking designs. Elsa Schiaparelli not only gained admirers, but also attracted enemies like Coco Chanel. Did she eclipse Chanel as the leader of the Paris fashion scene? Certainly in column inches. Elsa Schiaparelli's name garnered more attention and recognition, overshadowing Chanel in terms of media coverage and public recognition. Chanel's public disparagement inadvertently propelled Schiaparelli's rise to the top of the fashion world. Schiaparelli became known for her daring, wit, and stylish glamour, eclipsing Chanel in terms of media coverage and becoming the epitome of French chic. Her extraordinary fashion shows, global tabloid presence, and personal wealth solidified her status as a formidable force in the Paris fashion scene, despite her Italian background. One of Elsa's most iconic creations was the lobster dress, a collaboration with Salvador Dali. It was launched in 1937 and was used in many collections. Elsa's imagination combined with Dolly's artistic genius resulted in a dress that featured a vibrant lobster motif, defying conventional notions of what was considered appropriate or fashionable. This daring and surreal design became an emblem of Schiaparelli's irreverent and boundary-pushing style. Elsa's innovative use of color was another hallmark of her designs. She introduced a vibrant shade of pink, which she called shocking pink, into her collections. This bold and electrifying color quickly became synonymous with her brand and became an enduring symbol of her fearless approach to fashion. Schiaparelli's visit to Hollywood and encounter with Mae West sparked her inspiration for the perfume Shocking. Aware of the success of perfumes by other female designers, like Chanel's No. 5 and Lambin's Arpege, Schiaparelli knew she needed to seize an opportunity. Having designed costumes for Hollywood films and dress stars like Marlene Dietrich, Schiaparelli recognized Mae West's figure as a contrast to conventional leading ladies. Embracing this uniqueness, she created the perfume Shocking and a dress with inflatable air pockets, celebrating West's voluptuous silhouette. This innovative ensemble, reminiscent of Dior's new look, made her a household name. She had begun her reign as the most important and sought-after couture in Paris, a world figure, a very rich woman, and an influencer. Elsa also ventured into accessory design, creating imaginative and whimsical pieces. Her collaborations with surrealist artists resulted in unique jewelry designs, such as the shoe hat and the tears necklace, which blurred the lines between fashion and art. Elsa Schiaparelli's contributions to the world of fashion were revolutionary. Her avant-garde designs challenged conventions, shattered boundaries, and ignited the imaginations of generations to come. Her legacy continues to inspire and influence contemporary designers who draw upon her spirit of artistic expression and fearlessness. Though Elsa Schiaparelli's career faced challenges and setbacks, she remained true to her artistic vision and left an indelible mark on the fashion industry. Today, her work is celebrated in museums and cherished by fashion enthusiasts worldwide. She once said, a dress does not remain attached to the wall like a painting, nor does it lead the long intact and preserved existence of a book. Indeed, her dresses may belong to the past, but their impact and significance endure reminding us that fashion is not just about garments. It is a form of art that captures the essence of its time and leaves a lasting impression on the world. In a way, we can maybe say that Elsa Schiaparelli faced the challenge of timing. She possessed a unique ability to leverage the immense power of surrealism and formed close bonds with celebrated artists like Marcel Wirtz and Salvador Dali. Together, they crafted fashion that brilliantly captivated Paris during the 20s and 30s. But what she learned was that what amuses one generation is rarely really right for the next one. 
Quirky elements such as hats resembling shoes or a mutton chop, paperclip fastenings, fairground motifs, and jackets with drawer-like pockets were essentially fleeting publicity stunts, which have unfortunately overshadowed the enduring brilliance of Elsa Schiaparelli's genius and core creativity, a reliable and timeless creativity that remains regrettably overlooked by some fashion historians.